All right, we're starting with Dale Walker, who all his stuff gets a cooldown, which is good. Um, and he's right here. Um, I guess to fulfill this scenario, we need to start collecting those uh, those diaries. The problem is there's those little girls hanging out next to where the diaries are, so that sucks. Uh, how do you even get into this room? You have to go through here, and then there, and then there. Oh, that's gonna suck. So what's Dale, what can he do? I guess he can use his acrobatics to start with to move a couple spaces. Um, but I think he might actually choose to do that after he's in a space with a little girl or something. I don't know. So let's see. He's gonna go... Um... Also, he doesn't have any weapons, so that's a bad thing. So he's going to, I think, grab at least a steel cross or something from Helena. So he's going to go one, two, and he's going to spend an action to do some trading with Helena. He's going to take the steel cross off her hands, which actually is going to be very nice against these enemies. And she's still got a shotgun. And he's going to go ahead and take the sertraline as well. So that was his third action, but then he's going to use his ability to move two spaces. Now he can move out of this space containing the enemy anyway, um, because there she's ethereal. So you can move out of spaces that only contain ethereal enemies, as long as you're not ethereal as well. So we're going to go one... Um, I think the fastest way would be two, three, four, and then through here, and then through there. Um, either way, he's going to be attacked by the little girl soon. But this way, he's actually in the path of the nurse, which is not something I want. So I guess we're going to go back this way for now. And that way, I don't have to face the little girl immediately either. Okay, so that is his entire turn. It is Peter Constant's turn. Uh, he is going to go one, two. Uh, we're going to reduce his cooldown. I think he's just going to run three, four, five. And that way he's on the space with the nurse and he can fight her. And then he can fight little girl when she comes over. We really got to grab those diaries, though, man. Uh, okay. The uh, Marcus Dieter, his turn, he is essentially dead, uh, but still walking. And we're going to reduce all his cooldowns. Is there anything he can do? Um, I mean, he can use a club to try and club the monsters. He doesn't have his craziness unleashed. Um, I, I guess he's just going to use his Bedside Manor. So he's going to use Bedside Manor for his first action and recover three health to himself. Which helps him out a little bit. For his second action, he's going to try to club some of these enemies. Um, we'll start with the Scavenger because they're easier to kill and they do more damage. Uh, that was one damage, I think, because he only hits on a five or better. And we'll try and do it again and get two more damage. Uh, actually, we will increase our insanity to roll the chaos die. All right, that was actually good. One, two, three successes. So that kills the scavenger. There's still a patient in the room, but that's okay. We will put this craziness unleashed cooldown uh, and that way we can use it again real soon. And we're still, uh, we still have Helena Swan. So she's going to first grab this memory token in her room. And we'll see what kind of memory she finds. Oh, it's one of her memories. That's good. Can anybody out there feel me? Because I can't seem to feel myself. Low pulse is a skill. Um, permanent, cost none. You can leave spaces with monsters on them by losing one health per monster. Well, she doesn't need to do that. So that was her first action. Uh, 
for her second action, she is going to, I think, just leave the room. Because otherwise, Big Mama is going to come after her. If she only gets to move one space this turn. So she's going to move... Um, anywhere she goes, she's in danger. Because if she goes back in here, that nurse is coming after her. But I don't know. Uh, there's not really... We don't really have a lot of options. So she's just going to move like that, and then like that, and she's... Oh no, there's the little girl's gonna attack her. Ugh. I mean, even that is better than Big Mama, I think. I don't know. Yeah, and, it, even, and if she ended here, she would also be in danger from the Warden. So that's no good. So I guess we're, we're just gonna leave it like that. And now we are, again, pretty dead. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what we get for the movement card. Deadness. No event this time. We're going to randomize another memory token. D10. D10. Shun. Okay, there's D10. Already has a memory token on it, but that's okay. Um... The Warden is going to move, so he would have stomped her, which would have sucked. And then everybody else moves. And I don't think I spawned new enemies last turn, actually. I should have spawned two mental patients. So let's do that now. Uh, D5. And D7. So two new mental patients. And then there's going to be another scavenger and a nurse coming out. Is it just me, or is this one way harder than the last two that I did? I mean, it seems nearly impossible. Uh, where is seven? There's seven. Okay. Then everybody moves. So we'll start with Big Mama. She's going to go right here. Uh, we will have the little girls move next. There's one there. She's going to go here, I guess. She's going to go here. I guess. Yeah. Is that all the little girls? Oh, there's a little girl over here, too. So she's going to go, I guess, here. I don't know. Okay. Well, let's see. One, two, three. Ah, she's going to go up here. Okay, and then we are going to move everybody else. There's a mental patient there. The mental patient here is going to go like that. The mental patient here is going to go like that. The nurse stays where she is. Uh, the other nurse down here is going to go here. Um, the scav, no, mental patient, mental patient. Uh, they're going to go like that, I guess. And the new ones who spawned last turn are going to move, I think, like that. Cool. And then we have to spawn the scavenger at A5. A... A... I'm walking here. Where is A5, though? There it is. Oh, fun. Nice. Same space with Marcus. Uh, and then the nurse is going to spawn on A4. Which is... I... Assume, okay, it's over there. Cool. And then everybody is going to murder me. So let's do that. Um, we'll start with Big Mama. She's rolling... Six dice again, that's good. Oh, you know what? I didn't do... Now, that would have made a difference. I didn't do the uh, chill effect last turn on Helena Swan. So she would have had to use an action to be unchilled. So she actually would have ended up here unless she just stayed in the same spot with Big Mama. Um... 
I knew she was going to get stomped if I moved out there. So I guess she would have searched this drawer and then stayed put? Ugh. Okay, well, let's, let's use her action to search this drawer real quick. Um, okay. So she rolls seven imagination. Uh, is that seven? That is. Okay, she got one, two, three successes. So she could get a weapon. She could get a uh, drug. Let's actually grab some drugs and hope that it's something that'll heal her. Oh, it is. Yeah, she's going to use this uh, Timmy's pan and heal herself up. And I don't think it costs an action point or anything, so there you go. Uh, she has healed herself a little bit because she's about to get her butt kicked again. Okay, now we're going to deal with the Big Mama's attack. Um, and she actually only rolled two successes, which is nice. And we're going to get Helena Swan chilled again. So I had those chill tokens out earlier, but I think I put them away. So here they are. So Helena's getting chilled. And she takes um, one damage, I think. Because they got two successes, she has one defense. I don't think anything cut through her defense, so she's good on that. Um, then, let's see here. So that little girl wouldn't have moved into that. Well, yeah, she would still move into that space. Uh, so that was that. Um, now we're going to deal with all the other monsters. We'll start with Marcus Dieter over here who is uh, dealing with, it looks like a scavenger and a mental patient. We'll do the scavenger first. Rolled two successes. That means he takes two damage. And then the mental patient. Uh, and we're going to roll our defense die on this one. Oh, that was good, actually. So I rolled three on the defense, so I don't take any additional damage. So he just takes this two damage, so he's up to six. Okay. I mean, at this point, I'm just surviving. I don't think I'm possibly going to win this. Um, but, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, I was going to try and at least do that. Which means I have to kill a little girl. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Okay. And uh, then up here, the nurse is actually going to attack Peter Constant. So she rolls six dice. She doesn't have any special attack or anything. Uh, and she hits on a four or better. So she deals four damage to him. He's got one defense. So he's taking three. And that, uh, is that it? I did spawn the new enemies. Yeah, I think that's it, actually. All right. Well, let's continue onward. Okay. So Peter Constant is going first this time. Uh, and he is going to try to kill the nurse, I guess. So he's going to do his cooldown. Um... Yeah, let's attack the nurse with um, the lifelink and the meat cleaver. Um, well, no, let's let's before we do our lifelink, let's do just do our free attack with the scalpel first. So free attack with scalpel, rolling five dice. Uh, one success, and we take a durability on that scalpel, which, remember, it's not broken yet because he has an extra max durability. And uh, I think I just got one success, which she has one defense, so that didn't do anything. But that was a free attack, so that's okay. Now we're going to do our lifelink. I'm going to save my walking death ability, I think. But we're definitely using lifelink. And we're going to use the meat cleaver. And so this is seven dice here. 
and I can modify the result of one die by one against scavengers, but I don't have any scavengers. So seven dice. Any damage I deal, I get to recover. Okay, so one, two successes. That was horrible. Um, I think that that counts as two damage dealt. I'm not sure about that. Let me check that. Okay, damage is calculated after defense. So since I only dealt one damage, I only heal one. Um, and the nurse takes one there. And I did lose a durability on that attack. So that happened. That sucked. Um, I just really want to kill that nurse. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to use an insanity this time. Um, so... Right, I think, actually, I have a couple extra attacks because I've done the scalpel, which was free, and then the meat cleaver, and this is my second attack with the meat cleaver, so actually I have a couple more if I needed to. But we'll start with this. We're rolling seven dice plus the insanity chaos die. So let's see. Uh, that was way better. One, two, three, four, five, six successes. The nurse has one health, one shield, so she's taking five damage, and that'll kill her. Perfect. Which reduces the cooldown, or the countdown timer on that, which is nice. And also, I can reduce the cooldown on one of my abilities, so I'll do lifelink. Um, and that is his turn. I mean, he can go move around, but I think he's going to stay here um, and try to deal with the little girls in the future turn. So I think he's going to, um, I mean, for his last action, I guess he's going to use Holy Nova, and I still don't know how to interpret that, so we're going to say that it applies to all characters, including himself, because why not? And also those twins, because they count as friendly characters. So, again, why not? Okay, Marcus Dieter, personnel only, bedside manner, unstable energy, craziness unleashed is available. Which is good, because I'm going to be using it. Um, I guess he's just staying there and killing enemies, because he can't move out of that space. Unless he used his teleport ability, but it doesn't say that he can move out of that space using that. So, we are going to start with the club and try to club a scavenger to death. So let's try that. Uh, that was none successes, and the club gains a durability. Uh, we are going to do the same thing. Let's see. I want that diary, and I want that VHS tape. Dang it. Yeah, we're going to do the same thing. And let's roll some successes this time. In fact, let's get crazy about it. And we'll roll the chaos die. Okay, there was enough successes. Again, I have to add a durability, though, which sucks. But that was plenty of successes. One, two, three, four. So that thing is dead now. So I can reduce the cooldown on something. I will do my bedside manner because I'm going to want to use it again soon. Um, and then I'm going to use Craziness Unleashed versus the Mental Patient, because I want to kill that thing really fast, too. So remember, that is number of dice equal to blah, blah, blah. So it, it basically eight dice for him, because his Insanity maxes out at eight. So we're rolling eight dice. 
Uh, that's that's the right amount. Okay. Very nice. One, two, three, four, five. That is enough to kill it. And I get to reduce the cooldown on something. Let's do a uh, bedside manor so that I can use that again real soon. Okay, cool. That was Marcus Dieter's turn. Pretty eventful, if I do say so myself. All right, it is Helena Swan's turn. So again, she's gonna have to use one action to get rid of this. She can't move anymore because the warden is there. She knows she's gonna die. I mean, really. Um, what can she possibly do? I mean, she can't attack the Big Mama. I think she can attack Big Mama, but she can't kill Big Mama. And that sort of is going to suck. Uh, yeah, if she moves into this space, she gets stomped. So what? there's definitely you can't do that. The Warden's going to move into her space soon. There's really nothing that she can do. Uh, she can't even use her evacuation plan properly because, again, that's a wall, I believe. So, yeah. Hmm. Nothing that she can do on this turn. So, hmm. I mean, I guess she could attack Big Mama and try and deal some damage to her, and then Big Mama's just going to deal the damage back to Helena? I don't know. Maybe Helena should go suicide herself, but no, that's not good. Because Dale Walker's got to get out there. If Helena gets, um, gets killed, which she might if she gets stomped, then Dale Walker is next. So that's no good. Okay. I think Helena is going to, even though it's not going to do a lot of good, just try and do some attacks against Big Mama. So she's going to start with her uh, blur attack. She's rolling six dice because she had the chill done against her, against Big Mama. Uh, she got two successes. Uh, Big Mama has three defense, so that does nothing. Well, there you go. And then she has one more action. She's going to, I don't know, use her shotgun. No, shotgun wouldn't be worth it. She's not going to do anything. That's pointless. Okay. It is Dale Walker's turn. He's got to get out of there or else he's going to get stomped right after she gets done being stomped. So he's going to, hmm, he's going to use his acrobatics to move like this. He's going to try this door. It is barricaded, and a barricade he's not going to bother trying to get through. So that was his first action. Two, and, um, oh, he needs to do his cooldowns and whatnot. So, I guess with his third action, he's going to try, uh, he's going to do Vampiric Regeneration. So, he's doing uh, three dice, any fives or sixes, he recovers health. Well, that was two fives, so I'm keeping that result. That's good. Alrighty. Uh, it is time for the monster's turn, and it's going to be another sucky one. So let's see what we can do. Okay, been here before. All characters grow... Oh, this is actually one of the good cards. See, this is another thing about this game. So you have cards that are bad all around, and then you have cards that are essentially good all around. So this card, not only does it only spawn one monster, but also it has a positive special event. And there was that other card earlier that had the red star, which is super bad usually. Um, Warden moved, spawned nurses, and it's like, 
so I in a short game I'm only going to draw twelve to, of these, or maybe up to eighteen or something like that. So I'm just going to randomly have like really good events and really bad events. That's just weird to me. Anyway, um, so everybody rolls an imagination test, and if they succeed, they draw a memory, which is great. So Peter, uh, he succeeded actually. Marcus is going to uh, he's going to use his zombies teeth card to automatically succeed. Uh, Helena does not succeed, and Dale does not succeed. All right, and they just barely failed, both of them. So Peter gets Peter's memory. Ad constringendum, ad ligandum, eus pariter et solvendum, et ad congregandum eus corum me. Dark ally, skill, one use only. Summon a demon to your space that disappears at the end of your turn. It can attack two times with all sorts of crazy attacks. Like absurd, really insane attacks. So I can use that actually to kill that little girl when she comes a knocking. Uh, but she's we gotta wait like two more turns for that, which sucks. Alright, that's pretty cool. Nice memory there. And then Marcus get to draw one. Memory step five. Not every moment in the asylum is miserable. A stray puppy appeared one day and has been cheering up the patients ever since. You go to play with it, but discover that someone has put sharp objects in his food. The dog is shrieking loudly while you struggle to get the needles out of his tongue and mouth. The noise is alarming other patients. They will assume you hurt the puppy and beat you senseless. Roll an imagination test. Fail, put D3 mental patients in your space. Okay, so that memory sucked. So is that eight dice? Yes. One, two. Oh, I just do need to do an imagination test. So I just roll two dice and I need to roll eight or less. No. Okay, so let's, how many mental patients are gonna go into his space? Two of them. Okay. Okay, that's okay. I gotta wrap this game up anyway, so here we go. We're, we'll just fail uh, in, a, in a flaming ball of glory, or whatever the saying is. Um, Okie dokie. And then we have the green star ability, which means, remember, the twins have minus one to their defense. And uh, actually, this, I don't think, Memories doesn't have a green star. So the green star doesn't do anything for memories. The warden is going to move and stompity stomp Helena, which means she's stunned, and she takes some damage. Four damage. She was already at five, so now she's at nine. And she's about to die, which, yeah, this is going to be bad. Basically, we're done. But we'll, we'll play out the rest of the turn. Um, enemies are moving. Let's try and do this quickly since it's not really going to make a difference. That guy's going to move there. She's going to move here. She's going to move in there. Uh, she can't move diagonally. She's going to move like that probably. Uh, he's going to move like that. She's going to move over here. Um, she's going to move, I guess, here. She's going to move here. And they are both going to move into Dale Walker's space. The little girl is going to move down here. Um, that guy's going to move here. This guy's going to move there. And then they are going to... Uh, we're going to spawn a new one. Who's probably going to spawn right on top of Helena or something. Oh, you know, and this guy moves over here. Because he can't stay in the space with a person. A8. A8 for the new mental patient. A8. Over there where the cassette tape is. So called cassette tape. And uh, then we are going to get our faces beat in by Big Mama. Let's start with Big Mama. Now remember, Helena Swan has no defense because she has been stunned. 
All right, she's going to roll her easy attack again. That's good, I guess. Oh, you know what? When I attacked Big Mama, she also would have rolled two defense dice. She's impossible to kill. That's impossible. I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Um, it just doesn't seem very likely with uh, the abilities that I have. Because she's going to have at least three defense, but possibly up to like seven or eight. I mean, I've, of course, you get you got to get all of the stuff. So you got to get all the diaries and get the cassette tape. But I did. I mean, I don't have a chance to do that in the amount of time that's left. Anyway, so Big Mom is attacking Helena again. She rolled one, two, three successes. So Helena is dead. So. Helena being dead, she's going to respawn back here. She heals up. She gets uh, minus two to her uh, insanity. She gets an extra durability on all of her stuff. And then the big thing is now this guy moves one, two, three. Well, guess what? He's about to move past the last space on the tr insomnia track and move into here. Now, technically, that just triggers like a final showdown against the warden, but um, it's described in the rules as a near impossible battle. Let me show you the stats for the warden. Um, health is eight times the number of players. He attacks twice. He has an aura of reality, which basically means every time you attack him, you roll, I think an imagination check. And if you fail, you don't get to attack him like your attack just doesn't do anything um and he has some really bad attacks so that's not gonna happen to uh put it nicely so if he moves off this track i'm going to consider the game to be lost and that is fine i was hoping to try and save those twins before that but i don't think it's happening because now um marcus dieter is going so, he is being attacked by two mental patients. And we will start, uh, we will roll defense for this. Why not? Um, okay, no successes. That's great. Next one, we will also roll defense for. Uh, two successes, he defends against one of them, he takes one damage, so he is still barely clinging in there. That's good. Um, and he's going to have to use his Tresdolodite, or Trogolodone, or whatever it is, um, on the next round. And, uh, that's fine, and then Peter Constant, uh, no, nothing happens with them. And then down here, Mr. Blade, I mean Mr. Dale Walker, is going to defend against his mental patients. And he, he's no danger of dying, so let's see. Um, okay, two successes. He defends against one. The next guy's going to roll an extra dice. And no successes, so that's good. Okay. But we are going to call it there, I think, um, because... This warden is over here. There is no way we are completing this. I mean, we could, by chance, turn over a couple of cards and not get warden movement, but pretty much there's no way we're completing it before the warden moves off this space. So we are going to say that is it for this game. Thank you for sticking with me for... Uh, if, if you did, assuming you did. Um, thank you for sticking with me for this long video of Lobotomy. I hope that is everything you need to see about the game to determine whether you would like to purchase a copy uh, for whatever it's going for, like $100, $120. Um, yeah, I'm not going to share my thoughts. I'm sure they are abundantly clear. But um, for Lobotomy, that's all she wrote.